In our last installment of the Retro 5.0 series, we made 411 horsepower and 399 pound-feet of torque with the modern TrickFlow 11R top end kit. That makes it about 60 horsepower more than the traditional head cam and intake packages were worth back in the day. Now, we're gonna take the next step and add boost. Back in the 1990s, the Vortec S-Trim Centrifugal Supercharger Kit was about as ubiquitous as the Fox body itself. Going on 30 years later, Vortex still offers the same blower kit, but with a more modern supercharger. Now called the SI trim, its modern design is advertised as being able to make 775 horsepower at its max. So, let's head back to KPE Racing and get the blower installed on Retro 5.0. Welcome. You've got mail. Alright, it's late o'clock. Late o'clock. <laughs> it is late o'clock. Wow. Um, we have the Vortec all bolted on. It actually was the easiest bolt on we've done this entire week. All we have to do is get a new serpentine belt because this new configuration is a little bit longer. And then we're going to make all the boost noises and hopefully all the boost power. But that will be tomorrow morning. Tonight, we make another run to the parts store. I'm going to sleep. So obviously, a new day here. We got our belts. We got our colder plugs. Uh, everything's hooked up. Everything's plumbed and ready to go. With the awesome news that we are uh, being thrown into the deep end today. Uh, Brian and I will be dynoing this ourselves. Uh, luckily, we have Matt from Never Enough Performance. Uh, you might recognize that name from a couple other articles. Uh, but he's going to help with the tuning side because I've never tuned a supercharged application before myself and I don't know that I trust myself. But today we are going to make power and it's going to be a noisy day. So let's get at it. So for this first dyno session we're actually going to start on E85 because it's a much safer fuel and we're, we don't have an intercooler so a little bit of you know intake air temp is going to be an issue. So we're gonna start on E85. This is, we're gonna make more power on E85, obviously. Thankfully, we've got the, the Boostane uh, Race E85. Uh, we actually just did an article on this. We used this on our giveaway engine to make a thousand horsepower without batting an eye. So it's gonna do more than what we need to do on that little engine. But yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna transfer this into the dyno cell and get started. <laughs> two pulls and this engine is made way more than expected uh, we're currently sitting at 602 pound-feet of torque and 646 horsepower at 7 psi and we have put almost no timing um, these blocks are only supposed to be good to 500 horsepower so we might end up with a two-piece block by the end of the day but I think we keep going. I mean, we, we've got plenty of timing to put in there. We've got good gas in it. Let's go. <laughs> All right, I think we're stopping here. I am so out of my depth. We have made 687.5 horsepower and 616.6 pound feet of torque on a stock five liter bottom end. Well, it's got a good piston. I think we're done. Um, the plugs say we can put more timing in it. I'm not putting any more time in it. We can 
probably lean it out some more. I'm gonna lean it out some more. This is an eminently safe tuna. And this block isn't known for the world, let's be honest. So we made quite a bit of power and the Boostane Racy 85 has made it ridiculously easy. Uh, we have not had any fuel related issues whatsoever. Um, yeah, I think I think that's gonna wrap it up for this. Um, you gotta read the article because for all I know, Tommy's gonna come in and decide he wants to hit 700. I'm not doing it. But. All right, Greg from the future here. Uh, we have some, some stuff to talk about real quick. Uh, once Tommy got in and looked at the engine, uh, we realized the coupler had come off. Now we noticed that, but because we were making the 11 PSI throughout the run that we thought we were going to be making, we assumed on the very last pull it just popped off when we when we decelerated. Well, when Tommy put it back on and made his pulls, because I told you that Tommy wanted to uh, make a little more power and check my tune-up, we saw 17 PSI. And we saw a whole lot more power. So, Tommy took that and worked on it a little bit, which I'm gonna show you now. Um, we did not end at 687 horsepower by a long shot, so check it out. So unfortunately, Greg had to leave us, went back to Arizona, uh, but Tommy and I had the wild idea of, hey, we're so close to 700 horse, let's play with it. So we're back on the dyno. One thing we noticed is we had a big boost leak. The uh, coupler had actually blown back and we weren't making all the boost we could. So we fixed that. Uh, and we're gonna make some more pulls and we'll see how it goes from there. Hopefully this thing stays together, we'll see. Yeah, he's looking pretty smooth. <laughs> Seven, actually, we made 789 that time. Uh, 795. <laughs> point four. I'm sorry, I forgot the point four. Uh, but it, it did kind of find a flat spot. I think that's probably valve screen. But. There you have it, 829 horsepower and 673 pound-feet of torque from 302 cubic inches of 8.2 inch deck small block Ford. That's well beyond anything we would have seen back in the 1990s, on a stock is short block anyway. And if we're being perfectly honest, it's more than any of us expected from this little mill. It was so much power in fact, we reached out to Vortec to make sure it had the right supercharger pulley on it. It did. But the kit's 10 PSI rating isn't at 7,000 RPM we spun the engine to. In a centrifugal supercharge application, more RPM equals more boost. Ultimately, the modern impeller of the SI trim supercharger is still within its efficiency range all the way up there. There's no denying this jaunt into the past has been fun, and we're not done yet. The next step in this project is to tear the engine down and perform a detailed inspection. Even though there have been no signs of any kind of distress, we want to make sure that the block doesn't have any hidden cracks in it and that the rods are all still straight. Assuming everything checks out, we have another project in the works for this block, but it won't be under the Retro 5.0 name. 
In fact, none of Retro 5.0 Short Block will be returning to service. Instead, we're preparing to launch part two of the Retro 5.0 project, where we plan to go buck wild with some of the best modern parts you can get, again, in a similar fashion as it was done back in the 90s. If version 1 was comparable to an NMRA Real Street engine from back in the day, now we're stepping up to EFI Renegade. Check out the article in the link below for all of the technical details of the project, and make sure you're subscribed because we have a cool Retro 5.0 related giveaway coming up soon, and so that you can follow us on the next part of this journey. We're aiming to build a 1200 horsepower 8.2 deck hydraulic roller small block Ford. So get subscribed, stay tuned, and I'll see you then. Okay.